a welcome back that was on credit financing. Fuel subsidies significantly affect the cost of construction materials, transportation, and machinery used in the real estate sector. With subsidized fuel prices, the demand for fuel surges are leading to shortages and subsequent price increases. Consequently, transportation costs for construction materials rise, resulting in higher overall construction expenses. The increased cost of construction negatively impact the real estate developers who may either pass the additional cost to buyers or experience reduced profit margins. I have a real estate expert and public affairs analyst, Mustafa Iwenla, joining me now to discuss further. Well, many thanks for joining me, Mustafa. Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, it is indeed our pleasure. Let's just uh, talk about uh, the real estate sector, all that is happening, with well, the fuel subsidy removal. In my intro, I talked about how it has impacted on transportation costs. Specifically, let's talk about uh, the real estate sector. How has it impacted in terms of um, the costs of construction? All right, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Justin. Thank you for having me once again. So uh, let's cut to the chase. Mm. Uh, this is not the first time a particular government has tried to remove FAP subsidy. Mm -hmm. uh, President Gulag Jonathan tried it, but failed. Uh, during the time of Buhari also, he tried it, but he failed. Uh, finally, uh, on May 29, 2023, this year, President mm -hmm. Bola Ahmed Tinubu yes. finally removed FAP subsidy. For me, I think it's a welcome development. All right. um, in all honesty, uh, what I think is a problem is uh, the timing of implementation and also the fact that there was no proper plans in place before the implementation. I mean, according to the National Orientation Agency, some certain group of people have been benefiting from this FOB subsidy for many years. I tell you, the federal government pays well close to 400 billion monthly on FOB subsidy payment mm. to this certain group of individuals. So for the president, President Bahar Ahmed Tunubu, to finally say, no, enough is enough. Yeah. We cannot continue to enrich certain individuals at the expense of well-meaning Nigerians is a welcome development. Okay. So my prayer is that such monies is now put to good use in terms of to, you know, to improve infrastructure, road, in terms of our health sector, mm -hmm. education, and other I mean, sectors that need to be improved. Yes. Now, now we now we down to real estate. The honest truth is, the real estate sector is largely affected with the removal of FEP subsidy, no doubt. Okay. Because one of the problems that stakeholders are experiencing right now is that there's a huge increase in terms of building materials. Okay. There's a huge increase in terms of uh, affordability of homes. Now, if you drive around, take your time to drive around. VI, Ikoi, and, and its environs, you will see that there have been a slowdown in terms of construction work. That's due to the sudden um, removal of FOB subsidy. Now, so what I think should have happened before Mr. President announced or implemented the FOB subsidy regime is that there should have been consultations with relevant stakeholders. Now, when you talk about relevant stakeholders, there should have been consultations with professionals. You cannot wake up one morning and announce that you want to remove FERP subsidy without having any proper plan in place. Mm. Now, if the prices of houses go up, it will narrow down, it will trickle down to other household needs, whether you like it or not. Mm. In recent times, rental values of properties have, in, have doubled all over the places in, in, in Nigeria, not just Lagos. Mm -hmm. But it is mostly affected in Lagos because Lagos is more, more, of, the, more of a business hub and is mm -hmm. a place where a lot of Nigerians stay. Mm -hmm. Lagos house is over 22 million Nigerian. Okay. So, of course, the need for house would increase by the day. Our housing deficit increased in the year 1991. Our housing deficit was 7 million. Now, as of June 2023, our housing deficit is 28 million. Mm. The housing deficit tripled up, or not even tripled, quad, quadrupled in the past decades. And that's due to the fact that we already have a lacuna in terms of housing provision, housing supplies. Mm. Now, what the removal of first subsidy has also done now is to add to that lacuna. 
there's a huge deficit. A lot of Nigerians are not homeowners. A lot of Nigerians are tenants. And meanwhile, in, the, in other climes, a lot of citizens are homeowners than, uh, than people who rent houses. That's because there's access to loans, there's access to, access to mortgage. Mm. Now, aside from the fact that construction materials will go up and has gone up, cement was 4,000 era some few months back. Now it's close to 5,000. Transportation cost of moving your materials from one point to another has also not just doubled but tripled. That's because, I mean, fuel was 118 era barely I mean, in May. Or whatever, but now it's about almost 700 naira. So the so the impact is very very deep, mm. and I think that the government and relevant stakeholders needs to have a roundtable discussion on how to cushion this effect. Mm. Distributing 8,000 naira to every family or every household is not the solution. Increasing minimum wage will not give us the long term solution that we need. Okay. Yes, it is a step. Uh, is a step in the, step right, in the right direction. Yeah. It will cushion the, uh, the effect a little. Yes. But overall, overall, there needs to be something more concrete mm. done to, the, to cushion this effect, or else it will continue to trickle down okay, so in a negative way. Okay, let's still talk about uh, uh, investors. Now, would you really say that uh, since the removal of uh, the fuel subsidy, that uh, the investors' confidence um, uh, has actually decreased? Yeah, so, so the honest truth is one of the fallout or the aftermath of increasing or re removing from subsidies that it has, we, it has decreased, we have a decrease in investors' confidence. Mm. Whether you like it or not, investors who are bringing their money in Forex and want to invest in a Naira economy will definitely have a rethink. Right now, I have investors who were supposed to kickstart projects as at June last month. Mm. But right now, we are at the point of either taking that investment to another country or looking for ways to see how we can manage to put it up here such that we can still break even. Mm. Because whether you like it or not, the budget we had, such investors had a few months ago, will have doubled mm. or even tripled. Yeah. So investors' confidence right now is shaky. Mm. And that's the honest truth. So if something is not done yeah. in a very short time, Mm. We will lose inv investors' confidence totally, and it would affect a lot of sectors in our economy. That's the honest truth. Mm. Because the real estate sector is a very vital and a critical sector of this mm. country. It contributes a lot to our gross domestic product. Mm. And it's a sector that we cannot continue to shy away from. And it's a sector that we cannot continue to, you know, because... When everything happens, the real estate sector is the most affected. Yes. And because every, everybody, whether you like it or not, everybody has a house. Yes. Everybody is a landlord. Everybody yes. directly yes. or indirectly deals with real estate. Okay. You are either a tenant or you are a landlord. Okay. You are either paying rent or you are collecting rent. So it indirectly or directly affects real estate. Mm. And that's a very critical sector of the country that we, should, we shouldn't joke with. Okay, I know you've talked about uh, how um, the prices of uh, you know, supplies and uh, building materials um, have increased. Uh, so in general, now, what do we see as per, I'm sure in my head, I'm thinking that affordability has actually uh, reduced. reduced yeah. And uh, are people actually uh, buying houses? Uh, in the past um, three months uh, since the subsidy removal, how has the effect been as per people are going to buy homes and all? Okay, so the honest truth is since the implementation of the removal of first subsidy, the purchasing power of people have reduced okay. drastically, and that's the honest truth. Uh, in the past three months or thereabouts, I lost. I, I don't think that a lot of people have concluded transactions that has to do with sales mm. or purchase of property because mm. this is something that directly affects people's budgets. Budget, yes. People live on a certain budget. On a particular month, you have an expectation of your inflow. You have an expectation of your health flow. Mm. So this sudden increment in fall price, as people, people are yet to adjust or come to terms with, even as a person, mm. as a person, to fall my car before now will cost me about 10,000 naira maximum or 11,000 naira. And I drive a V6 car. Mm. Now to fall my car is almost about 50,000 naira. Wow. So that has also affected my own budget too because mm. I'm trying to adjust and it's very difficult. Mm. So... Expenses has tripled. Mm. Inflow is the same. Mm. States like states like um, Edo states uh, giving ten thousand naira to civil servants and pensioners 
it is something little, but it will go. It is. It will not go a long way, but it is. Okay. It's better than nothing. Okay, let's talk about uh, maybe uh, urbanization or maybe migration, as it were. Uh, my school of thought believes that there will be a growing preference for people moving towards um, the urban centers, and uh, it will reduce demand for properties in suburban and rural areas. How does that really work? Okay, so naturally, people will naturally migrate from the rural areas to the urban centers mm. in a way to search for greener pastures. Okay. And this ultimately increases... Uh, a lot of things in the urban center in terms of the cost of housing is not is not cheap mm. the cost of living is not cheap for you to rent a one room self contained now somewhere in lucky face one or a thereabout you might you might need to have close to a million mm. and such person might not even earn a million in a, in, in 3 months mm. so that means there has to be a change in how we tend to address a lot of issues particularly from the government angle Everything rises and falls on the government. Mm. The government needs to come up with a, with a blueprint of what we need to do going forward. Okay. There's a price in four Ike. It has affected the cost of living, cost of houses. The prices of goods and commodities have increased. Mm. When you go to market, what you, what you bought yesterday is double or True. triple of what you bought yesterday. Mm -hmm. So something has to be done in terms of a framework that will work. Mm. Nigeria is not the only country that has removed FERP subsidy. No. Angola is the second largest country Mm. Largest oil producing country in Africa. Yeah. They've also re they removed first subsidy the same day, mm. the same week. Nigeria removed first subsidy. Yeah. Nigeria is the fifteenth largest oil producing country in the in the world. Yeah. So we need to so countries that have removed sub first subsidy. But how did they survive? Uh, we need to learn from how did they. What was the framework? What was mm. the template that they used? How do we learn from them such that we do not put our people to abject poverty because we want to improve or remove first subsidy? Mm. Like I said. Removing FERP subsidy is a fantastic idea. I love it. Certain people cannot be enriching themselves while other people suffer. Yeah. But what plan do you want to put in place? What use do you want to put that funds? Yes. 400 billion monthly. To... How do you want to channel that money? Yes. Are you going to improve roads? Are you going to improve infrastructure? Are you going to improve school health? Mm. Now, you do not improve, you do not remove FERP subsidy and still increase tuition fees. So you see, the honest truth is there's a lot happening in our political space in the mm. past two months. That's the honest truth. Okay. And I think that the president of this country, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, mm. needs to have a solid framework on All ground right. before this thing happens. Okay, we are completely out of time, but just in 30 seconds, I'm sure there, are, uh, there have been some um, positive effects like uh, renewable energies and um, all that on the uh, real estate. Can you just uh, maybe highlight them uh, quickly? So the honest truth is, for subsidy removal mm. has more hand than good. Okay. But the good side of it is that, yeah. like I said, such monies can be redirected to it's other sectors of the country. Okay. Yeah, and it will help the larger populace in the mm. long run. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mustafa. I, thank you for I would have me. to bring you back again to discuss uh, more, maybe specifically uh, what you mentioned in passing, uh, the issue of um, housing deficits, uh, deficits in yeah. the country, something that uh, we should actually be looking towards um, addressing. Uh, my guest has been uh, Mustafa Ewenla. He is uh, uh, a real estate um, expert, and uh, we've been looking at um, the issue of a fuel subsidy removal and how it has affected Nigerians and the property and uh, the real estate sector. Thank you so much thank for being part me. of the thank show. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. Uh, Business Insight will return same time on your screen. Uh, many thanks for being a part of the show. I am Justin Akadoni. Bye for now.